Howdy and welcome back to another Bevy devlog. In this series, I'm trying to recreate the old Mario RPG games in Bevy. This was a shorter week for me, but I think I made great progress in getting the overworld working. We now have an NPC the player can interact with, including a basic layout for the chat system. We also have enemies wandering around the cave, and when we get close to them, it can start a fight. After we win the fight, that enemy is removed because the room state is saved between state transitions. Another key feature this week is that I am now able to load some enemy data and room layouts from configuration files. I stole this from a very old space game project of mine, and now overworld enemies can hold references to files defining their battles and enemy behaviors are defined in similar files. This should make level creation much easier and it means I can tweak things without needing to recompile the core game every time. Finally, we have just a few small graphical improvements. The NPC interact icon fades in and out as you come into range, and the fade out for winning the fight is more generic, allowing it to be used both for entering and exiting battles. I've also set up some nice looking backgrounds for the overworld in combat using Kenny's assets. The code is all on the GitHub branch linked in the description, so feel free to check it out and reach out on my Discord if you have any specific questions. Again, the Bevy Game Jam is coming up, so feel free to steal anything you think you can reuse to help you make a game for the jam. If you're interested in Bevy content or just want to follow along, please remember to like this video and subscribe. And as always, let's get started looking into the code and design. First up, let's talk about the last thing I worked on, NPCs. A core part of RPGs is the characters you meet in the world, so it's important to get these set up early in the project. So far, I'm just using my normal character sprite system, but I've tagged this one as an NPC. As the player approaches her, an icon pops up telling the player how to interact. The same icon can be used all over the place in the future to clarify what the player can interact with. When the player starts a chat, a dialogue spawns and the overworld state is set to dialogue, which can prevent things like enemies wandering and combat starting. The dialogue box is just a normal bevy UI box, but I discovered that text wrapping is a half-baked feature currently. Searching the Discord, I found discussions that this will be fixed in Bevy 11, but for now, text wrapping will only happen if the width is set in pixels and not if the width is set by percent. I have no idea why this is how it behaves, but all I need to do is check the screen size every frame and update the width manually, which isn't too different from what I do for health bars. Text size is still set by a font size, so there seems to be no way to guarantee that all the text will fit in the box, but I'm just accepting that this should work on all reasonable screen sizes. I probably need to test this out on a very high resolution monitor, but I'm not going to get pulled into worrying about features that I'm relying on Bevy for. To close the dialogue, the player just needs to press E again and the player is free to roam. The NPC also despawns when combat starts and respawns afterwards and the entire cycle seems to be working perfectly. Next up, we have overworld enemies. Enemy behavior right now is pretty simple. They have a home and a wander range and periodically they'll start wandering in a random direction. But if they ever get outside of the wander range, then they'll start pathing back toward their home. This obviously needs some polish, but I think it's perfect for this stage in development. If the player gets in range of the enemy, then a combat event will start. I added rapier physics as a dependency to the project, but I haven't set up any proper hitboxes yet, so for now things are just a quick and dirty distance check. I might keep these being distance checks just because it's easier than using a full physics engine, especially if I'm just checking if the player is one unit from the enemy, but I'm definitely going to use rapier for collisions with the map walls. The enemy parameters are defined in a RON file, which is loaded when the enemy spawns. I also have a path to another RON file in the enemy component, which determines which combat event it should load when a battle starts. This combat descriptor contains who should appear in the fight and in what slots they are in. Right now, I just reused the same combat for both enemies, but I hope you can see how flexible this system will be. After combat, the enemy should no longer appear in the room. I handle this with a current room resource. This tracks basic things like the current background and what enemies are still alive. Enemies just have an ID value, which I look up in the room when combat starts to remove the enemy. If the player can ever run from a battle, then I'll need to come back to this, but for now it works with the current battle system, so I'm happy. The current room also saves the positions of everything in the room, so it can restore them exactly to where they were when the combat ends. In the future, this will grow to have many different things about the room state, and is the start to a basic saving and loading system. 
Finally, I've been doing some basic cleanup to keep the project scalable. I moved the fadeout effect to a standalone plugin and made it more customizable. Now when something wants to use the fadeout, it's responsible for checking the just finished flag, which should only be true for a single frame. This is when the screen is completely covered, so it's safe to do despawning and any hard changes to the game state. I've also been struggling with the correct way to handle the handoff between overworld and combat. I'm trying to keep all cleanup after combat in the combat module running in the on exit schedule, and all the overworld setup is in the overworld module running in the on enter schedule, and that seems to be pretty organized so far. I'm still using the same organization structure I presented a few videos ago, and so far I haven't had any problems with it, so I think it's turning out pretty good. This week was the opposite of last week. I have much less to talk about, but I feel like the visual improvements to the game are much more impressive. Once I get map collisions and room changes set up, I think I can actually start to call this a game. I still have a long way to go, but I'm really excited about the progress I'm making, and I hope this is going to be a great open project for people to look into. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons and YouTube members. I really can't express how much your support means to me, and I hope you're still enjoying the bevy content I'm making. Please remember to comment and subscribe, and thank you for watching.